Welcome everyone to the weekly Q&A video. This should be fun. I hope it's fun. Let's make it fun. There we go. All right, let's get started. Sue Pete Corvin kicks us off by asking, fuck, Mary, kill. Ember Moon, Nia Jax, or Naomi? Can't really marry Naomi because she's technically already married. Um, ugh. I'm going to answer this question in a different way. I would most certainly give it to Nia Jax all night long. Ember really doesn't do anything for me. Again, Naomi's already married. And I'm not trying to marry any of them because they all look like they've got nothing but fucking nonstop feelings, which is annoying as shit. There, that's my answer. Kieran Chase, who is Dino Bravo? Nobody significant, nobody of note. He was a piece of crap wrestler who got in over his head with the Canadian fucking mafia trying to smuggle cigarettes and got shot like 18 times and he's dead. Most notable thing about Dino Bravo is that he's dead and that's all you need to know, Kieran. BC is for everyone. Do you want to come to my mom's basement to watch All In? We can eat mac and cheese and two sweet each other. I'll even have a Bullet Club shirt ready for you. Gee, how tempting. I think I'll pass. I'm gonna watch all win, which will have the exact same types of matches that I always see, but it's gonna be awesome because it has a bullet club and it has Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, and oh my god, could see him punk make an appearance since he's gonna be there and not before. Oh my god. I'm good. James Faluka asks, is it silly for people to rationalize WWE for not putting their best foot forward in pretty much every aspect? From a fan standpoint, yes. From a business standpoint, does it fucking matter? Sounds like they're about to get massive television deals for Raw and SmackDown. So they didn't need to put their best foot forward and they got paid significantly. Or are about to get paid significantly. Why would they need to put their best foot forward? I mean, that's not trying to make excuses. That's just stating fact here. If you could get away with not putting your best foot forward and you get rewarded handsomely, why would you ever do better? Why would you ever do more? Because you don't need to. It'd be easier to be lazy, which is what the WWE is. They're lazy. But their laziness is getting rewarded. That is what it is. Charles Mitchell. Do you think Samoa Joe is not credible enough to be in the world title pick since the last two matches he attacked somebody before it started and still lost? We're talking about credibility in WWE World Champions. Again, I come down to the simple answer is, does it matter? Does any of it really matter? If Jinder Mahal could fucking be a world champion, or this guy or that guy or any number of other guys can be world champion, then why the hell can Samoa Joe? It's that simple. Frederick Lowhouse. Who do you find worse, Vince Russo or Jim Cornette? Hmm. <sighs> More fundamentally annoying is Vince Russo, easily. But, that said, the best comparison I can make is Vince Russo is the GOP. Jim Cornette is the Democratic Party. And they both have completely ass-backward ideas on how to fix things. And by going down their divergent paths, we also ultimately end up in the same shitty spot. With Russo, he's made as many big stars in wrestling as I have over the past 15 years. For Jim Cornette, every time he goes somewhere and that promotion sucks or doesn't do very well, he's blaming everybody else for his goddamn self. The childishness of these two men in their 50s fucking sniping back and forth is pathetic. And that's the type of shit you're supposed to expect from the Marks. Well, who are the fucking Marks here? It's equivalent. I think Cornette's a better storyteller He's got some interesting things when you talk about the history of the business. So I feel like he's a little bit easier to tolerate, but what does it matter? Casey Pena asked, why did Monty Brown never win the NWA world title? Talk about a significant dropping of the ball. That's a great question. I'm sure there are answers out there in shoot interviews over the years, but... Nobody could get in the way of Jeff Jarrett's reign of fucking terror. That still pisses me off to this day. 
Could have had one fucking world title reign. Because again, for that company, did it really matter? But it could have mattered. And it's a bunch of shit that it didn't. Callum Burgess. What's your favorite match from every WrestleMania? So let me get this straight, Callum. You're asking me this question, expecting me off the top of my head to name my favorite match from each of the 34 WrestleManias. Expecting that to not take an eternity to do. Expecting me to have the brain matter or energy at this point to remember each of those shows and remember my favorite match for each of them. No. Here's what I'll do instead. I will guide you to the WrestleMania review series on this channel, which I believe includes every single WrestleMania being reviewed, which if you watch all 34 of them, as you should, will give you some type of indication of what my favorite match was from each of the 34 WrestleManias. That's your answer. You want to find out, go watch them all, and you'll probably enjoy yourself. Maybe. Hug life for life. Ah, oh, we're still on the Bailey shit, huh? How much longer until Owen Hart's wife lets him enter the WWE Hall of Fame? That bitterness is going on almost two decades now. Never say never. Hopefully soon. At some point in time, you know, shit happened. But ultimately, Owen signed off on doing the stunt. And stunts go bad. And it's tragic, it's sad, it sucks. It still sucks to this day. And I can understand not wanting to lose a husband and a father, and that's a horrible way to do it, and having animus and everything else towards wrestling. I get that. But at some point in time, are you really so determined to shut that part of your husband's life out and the, your kid's father's life out of their lives, which was such a big part of who he was and his identity? Are you really, really, really willing to take that bitterness to the grave with you? If you can't forgive and can't let it go, it will consume you, eat you alive, and you're no longer really living. You're just existing. Hopefully Martha at some point in time can put some of that animus aside and do the right thing. Because it is the right thing to do. Chris Manders, thoughts on the career of the million dollar man Ted DiBiase? He had a pretty nice run before he got to WWF, and he had a nice run within WWF. He was never going to be a franchise type of guy, like the clear-cut top money draw. He was a solid hand who embraced a gimmick and ran with it and was believable and made the most with it. And it was a genius gimmick. It's one of those gimmicks that you see a lot of other heel gimmicks be based off of to this day because it's so easy to hate the person that has it all and then flaunts it in your damn face. So it was an outstanding gimmick, especially for the time. Outstanding gimmick. Especially when you're trying to send people at Hogan. It's a great, great gimmick. Adrian Badass. Will Vince make Roman change his gear to something tighter? Specifically, probably in the codpiece region, you would imagine. Maybe assless chaps at some point in time. So that way, when all the adult bullet club marks sit there and boo him, Roman can bend over and tell him, kiss my ass, bitches. Probably the most interesting gimmick he would ever have. Uh, the Metal Smart, when WCW closed in 2001, did you ever envision WWE getting this bad? This bad, no. I envisioned that potentially WWE might not care as much and it might not be as good, and ultimately that proved to be true. I also felt like it was a disaster for professional wrestling as a whole, specifically for the talents and for the fans, and I also feel like I'm right about that and was proven right about that. I knew nothing good could come out of it, and a lot of bad did come out. Unfortunately. Uh, Robert Walker, your thoughts on Japanese wrestling? Um, not all the way for me. Too much no selling, too many false finishes, too much extreme shit that doesn't matter, doesn't have any consequence. Uh, but occasionally there are characters, there are talents, there are matches that I do enjoy and really like. So, you know. I don't totally shit on Japanese wrestling because there are elements and things about it that I do like. It's just, it's very match driven and there's not a lot of story there. Uh, a lot of these guys aren't necessarily honestly great characters, but you can tell they also take it seriously in a lot of cases, which I think is respectable and admirable. Um, but it's not my flavor, favorite flavor or favorite cup of tea, that's for sure. Ashwin, who do you think should win the men's Money in the Bank match? Should be Bobby Lashley. We'll see what they do. But you need to give him something before you squander the opportunity you had with bringing him back. 
Ashton Wheeler, thoughts on JR saying women shouldn't get paid for the greatest Royal Rumble. I saw a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago where he was talking about they didn't appear at the show so they shouldn't get paid. Which, on a fundamental principle of the old school rule of if you're not on the show, you don't get paid for where you're not booked. I get the logic. But I seriously hope JR wasn't that tone deaf and that stupid to actually think that that was okay. The women didn't perform at the Greatest Royal Rumble for factors that were completely and totally out of their hands. The company's getting a massive fucking payday out of it. They can float a little the ladies way. It would be the right thing to do. So if JR actually believes that, then kind of honestly in this case, shame on him. Bronx Project. Would creating a new type of modern kayfabe in wrestling be beneficial? Maybe where people advance their storylines via social media. Well, don't they kind of already do that? Here's kind of my thoughts on the way you look at kayfabe in the 21st century. To me, it should be one of two ways. It should either be where these wrestlers are totally and completely their own characters when they're on TV and in live events, and as soon as they're not doing that, they are their real personalities. So you're treating it more like they are actors, which is really fundamentally what they are, but they can take it seriously and not talk about outside world and other bullshit when they're in this space, and then when they're here, they just talk as real people about what they do in wrestling. Or you go the other way and you try to completely and totally sell it as legit and sell it as real. And I don't think that's going to work. I think the other way probably makes more sense for the modern world. But I do think there could be some potential appeal to that. Because what they do right now, this hodgepodge kind of hybrid shit to me doesn't really work very well. Uh, Chrysler San Martin. How honestly afraid were you about the Double J general manager rumors? I was significantly afraid because if he did that, I would have no choice but to have started watching SmackDown every week. As soon as I found out it was Paige, I was like, okay, great. I can go right back to not giving a fuck about and not watching the show. Well, yeah, I was afraid. I was very afraid. So glad it didn't happen. And Ryan Steele, second week in a row, closes us out by asking another provocative question here. Why do so many older fans wrestlers beat off to believability? When you got movies like The Irish Whip and others, that looks so damn fake. Well, you know, part of the thing about wrestling is it's always been about suspense of disbelief. And yes, ultimately, we know it's fake. We know it's scripted. We know it's bullshit. We know it's a work. But part of the thing is trying to make it believable, make it look real, especially when you're trying to still sell it as being realistic. And I'm sorry, there does get to be a point in time where wrestling gets too ridiculous with these guys not selling shit. And if these moves don't have consequence, if these moves don't have meaning, then eventually they don't matter to the fans. So believability is important while understanding in the grander scheme of things that it is all bullshit anyways. But if you're trying to sell a dude as a badass, don't you want to believe that he is a badass and have him doing things that make him feel like and appear like a badass? Believability goes in a lot of different ways. I understand what you're fundamentally getting at. There's a lot of this shit that just looks fake. But if you do it well, and I think sometimes that's more so what it comes down to, is doing it well. And you see these guys that will do these sequences with all these moves, and it looks so choreographed. It looks like such bullshit. If it was crisp, if it was sharp, it was on point, and it looked in any way believable or realistic, that's one thing. But you're doing something fake... And making it look even faker, now you're insulting my intelligence, and I don't like that. So I, I get what you're kind of getting at, but ultimately, if there's not some sense of believability or relatability here, then why does wrestling even matter? We can just go out in the backyard and do a bunch of these damn moves to, against the air, and fucking, that's all we can do. So anyways, that's it for this q and I guess I kind of enjoyed it. I hope you did. Dino Bravo's dead. Doesn't matter whether the WWE gets better or not because they got paid. They're about to get paid, paid, paid. Wish I could get on that action. Anyways, I'm the Slag Daddy. This is OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Later.